And to add on to this one, also, drink a lot of water in the Philippines too. The Philippines is very hot, man. So if you're running around here, drinking a whole bunch of Tandoi, drinking a whole bunch of beer, and all that stuff like that, you might be walking one day out in the sun and just be What happened to him? Man, he drank three uh, Tandois, and he'll wake up in a minute. He didn't drink no water today. You see? <laughs> but if you're gonna live a crazy lifestyle, balance it with water. Dog Han water, okay? This ain't the place to be dehydrated because you're going to be on the Saug. You know what the Saug is? The flow. All right. Next. Ten habits that you should acquire as a foreigner here in the Philippines. These habits will make you very successful here as a foreigner, okay? Let's talk about it. Wait, let me get a sip of my libation first. I got the mango shake going. Damn! <laughs> All right, number one, I would say, try to learn the language, right? At least a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it will help you in day-to-day -day communication. But just know that if you learn the language, Dude, they're gonna expect you to have conversations with them. So if you only know a little bit, you might get a nosebleed. Like me, for instance, I only know a little bit of Bisaya, right? So I might come in and say, my young hop on, ma'am. You know, they get the eyes like this. Oh. Then I'll say, como esta acá? Then they'll really be like, oh, like that. And then they're gonna unleash the Bisaya on you. They're gonna say, blah, 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 blah. And if you don't know a lot of Bisaya, then you're gonna feel dumb. You're gonna be like, uh, got my Bisaya lang. <laughs> you're gonna be nosebleed like a mofo, you hear me? So, when you start learning, never stop. Learn more and more and more and more. Because when you speak a little bit, they're gonna be expecting that you can speak a lot. Learn to the point, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to learn to the point where I can actually have full conversations in Bisaya. Right, because I live in Mindanao, so I'm learning currently Bisaya. I, I, I only want to learn one at a time. I know everybody says, learn Tagalog, dude. You better hurry up and learn that Tagalog. And I am going to learn Tagalog, but I have to have mastery, Diba, of the language and the dialect of the place where I am for right now, right? And the place where I am is Mindanao. They speak Bisaya. I got to learn that, right? And they don't even speak normal Bisaya, they speak Ilaganon, Biba. They speak Ilaganon out here, right? It's a whole different slang to it, a whole different accent, right? So when you learn the language, pick up the accent, the way they say it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that they will, dude, I'm telling you, man, they'll understand you more, they'll respect you more because you took the time to learn. And also, it will help you navigate your life here if you learn the language. Number two, you have to learn how to embrace the Filipino culture, right? And namely their way of life, right? It's the island way of life, man. They chill, you know what I'm saying? You can't come up here and be all uptight. Hey man, go get me that, go get me that. Go over here, do this, do that. Because as I always say, they're gonna look at you like, dude, chill the hell out, okay? You're living on an island now. You're living on a paradise, man, right? You ain't gotta be all high strung like you were in the Western world, right? And I mean, yeah, Filipino time is something that's real. You know, they do take their time in things, but learn where that came from, right? There's a reason why there's a concept called Filipino time. Because back in the days when the Spanish was trying to colonize them, they used to tell the Filipinos, be here this time and be here right now. And they went when they felt like going. It was an act of defiance. You understand that? A lot of people don't know that. That's where the Filipino time thing came from. Now, in the business world of the Philippines, of course, they are on time, you know what I'm saying? Maybe even early. But in day-to-day -day life, like it or not, they've adopted that whole Filipino time concept. Just chill, be patient, 
the person that you're looking for, they're gonna be there. They ain't gonna be there running early as hell. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. No, they're gonna be there in a little while. So what you need to learn is a Bisaya word, Kuchuklan, Kuchuklan. Do you know what does Kuchuklan mean? Just wait for a moment, okay? Your food will be here. Your doctor will be here, okay? Your, your car is going to get finished being fixed. Put your clan, man. Put your clan. Patience. Right? So I guess the, the, the lesson is patience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, that's important here. Uh, learn that. Okay, third. Now, you're living in paradise. You're here. You see all the beautiful trees and all the beautiful people, right? And everything like that. But you still have to be cognizant of your safety awareness and the environment around you. You're in a whole different country than where you come from, right? There's certain places that you should go, certain places maybe you shouldn't go as a foreigner. And I'm not saying this to try to scare anybody. And oh damn, Dean said I'm gonna get messed up if I come out there. No, I'm not saying that. I've been here five years, five great happy years. But the five years that I've been here are happy because I make sure that I don't go to unsavory places. I don't go to places where people are doing a lot of street business, you know, drugs and all kind of stuff like that because that's how you're gonna get yourself caught up around the wrong people. And you can't just say it's the Philippines because there's good and bad people everywhere, okay? Make sure you chill around good places and good people. Make sure you learn the local laws here because they got laws that's different from America or the Western world or whatever, right? It was one law that I was reading up about. I, I forget what it's called. Um, you guys tell me in the comments, but this law is a law where basically you can't be obnoxious or get on people's nerves or whatever like that. Like, it's really a law. <laughs> if you do that, you can get fined, right? Or if you're a foreigner, you can get your ass deported. They're like, oh, you oh, you want to be arrogant? You want to talk shit? Call immigrations. Okay, Dubai. And your stay here is finito. You understand? So learn the laws. Learn how to conduct yourself. You know what I'm saying? To be chill, to adapt and mesh into this new world that you're living in. Number four, if you can, as best as you can, try to stay fit when you're here in the Philippines, okay? And stay in shape. The food here is amazing. Damn, y'all see me grubbing, eating good food every day, right? But Filipino food is also very savory, there's a lot of frying going on, a lot of oil used in the food and stuff like this. So if you just sit back and eat and don't do nothing else, give it about four or five months, you're gonna be like this. <laughs> give me some more sea shake, please. Uh, 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 give me some of that uh, Calderetta too. You see? <laughs> nah, man. If you're gonna eat good, you have to have a good workout schedule. Right now, I used to be a bodybuilder. Right in my military days, I was in the, in the Marine Corps, and yeah, I used to lift weights and walk around, boom, all big and stuff like that. Nowadays, if anything, I'm trying to have the lean, you know, just cut up look. And I ain't got it yet. I know I got the muscular dad bod, but <laughs> I'm working on that. So no longer am I doing these big weights and all that stuff for what? No, I'm doing push-ups, I'm doing pull-ups, I'm doing jumping jacks, I'm doing calisthenics. Why? Because this is gonna keep my blood flowing, keep my heart healthy, right? And things of this nature. Because if you're gonna be eating this Filipino food, you better have a gym membership. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and to add on to this one, also drink a lot of water in the Philippines too. The Philippines is very hot, man. It's a very hot and the air is moist. Um, in America, we call it muggy. Muggy means that it's not dry heat, it's moist heat. You understand? We right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. 
It's moist, tropical heat. So if you're running around here, drinking a whole bunch of Tandoi, drinking a whole bunch of beer, and all that stuff like that, you might be walking one day out in the sun and just be, bloop, bloom. What happened to him? Man, he drank three uh, Tandoi's, and he'll wake up in a minute. He didn't drink no water today. You see? <laughs> but if you're gonna live a crazy lifestyle, balance it with water. Dog Han water, okay? This ain't the place to be dehydrated because you're going to be on the Saug. You know what the Saug is? The flow. All right. Next, another habit that you have to learn is cultural sensitivity, ba. What does that mean? That means don't do like this, huh? Every time you see something different, <laughs> right? Embrace it. Learn about it. Learn why do they do it. And then, if it's something that you think is good or that you believe in, incorporate it into your daily life, right? One of the examples I can give you of this is the Manopo, right? When I first saw my girl doing that, doing that Manopo thing, I mean, I was like baffled by it, but I didn't show it on my face, I just chilled. She went, when we went in the house, she put the hand of her mother, her father, her uncle was there. She was just doing, putting their hand on her forehead. And I was just sitting there like, uh, what the hell is she doing? Right? But guess what I did? After she did it, I did it. Hello, hello, hello. And her parents were surprised as heck. They were like, oh, he, he knows the man of I didn't even know the man of but I just did it what I saw her doing. Why? Because in my mind, I'm like, this must be a custom. This must be like, dude, I got enough sense to know that it was some kind of show of respect. Diba? So later she said to me, oh, you know about Manu Po? I said, Manu who? Manny Pacquiao? Who that is? She said, no, Manu Po. I said, what you talking about now? She said, well, when we did this, that was Manu Po. I said, oh, that was Manu Po. I said, I was just following you. <laughs> but. She's like, well, that's good. Always do that when we talk to elders and stuff. That's Manopole. So now you know. I said, ah, so that's the name of it. So that got incorporated into my everyday life. Now, anytime I see an elder that I'm that I'm gonna deal with or that I'm gonna interact with, hello, Paul. Right? Because the elders are our teachers, as I always say, they're our teachers, they're our storytellers, right? They're the ones that's gonna give us the torch as the next generations to move forward and build, right? So you give them respect, always, you see? But if you're close-minded to the culture, you won't learn that. You'll be a freaking asshole to everybody. Old, young, blue, black, rich, poor, right? So you gotta learn the ways of the culture here. Okay? Which brings me into another one, which is <laughs> if you come to the Philippines and you're coming from the Western world, prepare yourself to become more laid back, become more chill. It's not, go over here, hurry up, give me this, give me that. Hey, 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 what you doing over there? No, bro, chill. Chill your crazy ass out. Okay? You're on an island. Life is different here, man. Things do run a little different here. People do things on their own terms and kind of in their own time. <laughs> you can't rush nobody here in the Philippines. Yo, another one. When you're gonna live here in the Philippines, build social relationships, right? First of all, social relationships with the local people that are gonna be here. And so, you know that you'll have good friends here, people that are going to look out for you. You know, be good to them and they're gonna be good to you. I always say that, man. Filipinos can be your best friend, man, if you're good to them, right? And if they like you and you're good to them, they're gonna look out for you. They ain't gonna let nobody mess with you. They ain't gonna let nothing happen to you, right? You're gonna live here, you need to find a good plumber and stick with them. 
You need to find a good electrician and stick with him. You need to find somebody who has building skills. Of course, if, you're, if you don't have all these skills yourself, right? And put all their numbers in your cell phone. You need contacts. You need to know the number to the local police. You know, you need to have all these contacts. You can't just live in the Philippines in a cloud. Like nothing's gonna happen. Like you don't need to have connections. And oh, I'm just floating along. I love the Philippines. No, snap back into reality. Meet people, make connections, get connections, right? Even with other expats, right? Other foreigners um, that are here. And namely, other foreigners that have been here longer than you have because they can give you some insight. They can give you some of these things that I'm teaching, you know, face to face. And they can tell you, hey, here's my experience. Here's where you need to go to do this. Oh, you need to take care of this. Okay, go here and do this. You see? So it's all about making connections with people. Now, a caveat to that is, if you are gonna make connections with other foreigners here, make sure that, and then, oh, well, I'll put it like this. If you're gonna be friends with other foreigners here, Make sure they are like-minded to you. Make sure they live the same lifestyle that you do. Meaning, for example, right? I got a wife to be and two kids. I'm a family man. I gotta be home to my wife and to my children every evening so that I can be a service to my family, right? But if I hang around a whole bunch of other foreigners who are just being playboys, going to the strip club, getting girls, doing this, doing that, What's gonna to happen to my family, right? What am I gonna do if I'm hanging around all these guys day in and day out? I might be strong for a few days, for a few times, but after a while, I'll start partaking in what they're doing, right? And then I destroy my family. It's not worth it. So hang with people that are like you. I like to hang with other couples. If I hang with another foreigner or whatever, I hang with foreigners who are married or who have, you know, who have a serious relationship because they know the life that I'm going through. They can identify with me. And also, I know I ain't gonna be getting in no trouble. Hello. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I do it like that, yo. Make those connections, man, local and foreign. Another one, you gotta understand that the cost of living in different places of the Philippines is different prices, man. Living in the province, like where I live at, is a whole lot cheaper. I remember I did a video the other day and I was talking about um, getting a bag of soda for, what, 15, what, 12 pesos or something like that? Dude, people that are in Manila, they were saying that they paid, what, 15 pesos, 20 pesos for a bag of soda. When here, in the province, you're gonna pay 12 pesos for a bag of soda. I mean, all over the Philippines, I would say, the cost of living is cheaper than America, for sure, but some places in the Philippines are a little more expensive than others. Like, for instance, when I was in Cebu, I was in a luxury condo with um, massage service, um, in-home massage service, trash service, um, two bedrooms, fully furnished, all that stuff. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was paying like $800 a month, okay? What, 40,000 pesos is like 800 bucks, right? So I was paying that. But now that I'm living in the province, I pay $400 a month. But it's a three bedroom house that I'm living in now. You see the difference, right? And when I show people back home, you know, my house and stuff like that, they're like, man, how much you pay for that a month? I'm like, oh, uh, well, in, in, your, in our money, it's like $400 a month. They're like, I'm moving to the Philippines now. I'm like, no, don't come here. Stay home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they, they really get surprised by that because something like where I'm living right now, right, in America, a three-bedroom house, two bathrooms, upstairs, downstairs, right? would cost you monthly, okay, listen to me, probably almost $2,000 a month, and that's dollars, okay, right? So it's very different, the cost of living is very different, and that's good, but be cognizant of your spending. Don't just come here and be like, oh, I'm in the Philippines, I'm rich now. 
spend your money everywhere, spend your money everywhere, because by the middle of the month, you're like, I'm brown. <laughs> Doink. And that means you's a dumbass. <laughs> you understand? So just because you are considered a little more wealthy here in the Philippines than you were in America, don't waste all your money on bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Save a little something. Cause you never know anything can happen. And last but not least, respect the natural environment that you're at, man. Don't throw your damn trash all over the place. Oh, uh, I'm done with this bottle. Uh, uh, I'm a big lazy slob. Uh, come and give me a kiss, baby. Don't be a dick. That was just a prop, I'm putting that back. Right? There's enough trash to clean up around here. People are already working on developing this country, making it look better. You know what I'm saying? Um, building more things, getting all the trash up, making it look nicer, right? So don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. When you got trash, throw it away. When you come into a Filipino's place, take your shoes off. Don't bring dirt all into their house and stuff like that. Be cognizant of your surroundings, man. You got to. And if you do these things, you will be a successful foreigner here in the Philippines. I'm telling you, man. I tell you guys this because I got love for you and I want you to do well out here. But I also got love for the Kababayan and I want to respect their country and I want you to respect their country when you come here. All right? Y'all better listen to your boy Dean. And other than that, like, subscribe, do all that, do all that, do all that shit!